Hey guys, before we get started, just want to take a quick moment to thank Deer Cam Coffee and Yeti for everything they do to help keep us awake and energized for the whole show to keep you guys entertained. Make sure you subscribe and stick around to all Boner Plant stuff so you can get into chances to win things. And uh, hey, let's have some fun. The BHP Podcast is presented by bowhunterplanet.com. Join the hunt. Support for the Bowhunter Planet Podcast is provided by HHA Sports, Cold Steel Knives, Scott Archery, Burris Optics, Element Outdoors, Reveal Cellular Trail Cams, Deer Cam Coffee. Additional support is provided by Yeti. Hey guys, welcome to the Boner Plant Podcast. On today's show, we are talking Faradine, and we got the two most important people at Faradine, even though everybody's important at the company, of course. Uh, John, Todd, how are you guys doing? Excellent. Good. Dave, how are you today? Doing well, doing well. I, I guess I, what I want to do is touch base with you guys this year to see what's coming from Faradine, what is already out, uh, what's new. So I guess what's going on there right now? Well, uh, a little bit of everything. As you can imagine, we're heading into season and, uh, you know, given the, the craziness of the early part of the year, which is when a lot of the engineering happens for the next year with, with, you know, COVID. And unfortunately, we're in Wisconsin and we were shut down for 60 days, kind of right in the heart of typically what would be our, our engineering time that we're doing kind of post kind of post shows, what's new, what's different, what do we want to do for next year. Um, but having said that, we took the opportunity to kind of step back and go, okay, well, given some of the constraints of the business just with COVID, let's, let's do uh, fewer, bigger things for 2021. And so that's kind of been the mantra and the focus. And I will tell you kind of the, a couple of things that we're excited about. Number one is we've, we've got our ax crossbow launched, uh, something we designed totally in-house up here in Wisconsin or building it here in Wisconsin. And that's just getting out. We're just getting them out in the hands of people to, to play with and test. And the early feedback has been really, really positive. So we're excited about that. We're going to follow that one up with its with a bigger brother here at ATA and looking forward to doing that. And then obviously a number of, of uh, things across all of our lines. Obviously, you know, we were talking a little bit about uh, the shank and working on that new broadhead with Brian Kwok of the pig man who loves to kill hogs and was really looking for something that would would shatter bone and hogs. And that's kind of how that one came about uh, on the Muzzy side was, was, you know, Brian Kwaka literally just driving John and I crazy 24 seven until we actually did it. So he's got a, a lot to do with uh, the introduction of that broadhead. And then um, obviously with, with the expansion of the NC line across some of the other broadheads for rage this year, that's, as you know, the, the, the crown jewel and we continue to nurture that brand and, and add, um, additional broadheads to that to fill it out. So, um, you know, those are some of the, the high level things, obviously with 20 brands, we've got a lot of new stuff, not only for, for this year, but heading into next year. And, and right now it's really about, um, focusing on 2021 and, and getting some of these across the finish line here in the fall. So. Very cool. How, how do you guys, I guess, how do you guys judge all that with all the different brands? How do you juggle it? Is there like, um, is there a set path that goes forward where you say like, all right, this year we're focused on this, this, and this, or, you know, this year we are every year. Do you focus on every single brand? No. Well, we kind of, the biggest thing that we do is, and we've done it since day one is we listen to our consumers and, you know, we, we can't be everything to everyone, but we, we listen to our consumers and uh, the squeakiest wheel gets the grease, if you will. So we kind of look at our different brands and, and the different products that we have and, and offerings in those brands and, and see what we can do to accommodate needs of the consumer. And, and you know, that's, and it, it's not only the consumer, but it's the direction of the, the industry as a whole, you know, like everything's evolved so much over the course of the past, you know, I've been, I hate to age myself, but 20 years that I've been doing this, <laughs> um, things have changed so much that we just kind of always have to evolve and, and try to stay ahead and, see what our competitors are doing and, and uh, you know, just try to, to try to keep ahead. And, you know, we've, we've been lucky enough to, you know, have some really good products over the past, you know, several years. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves upon is that, you know, we, we stay on the cutting edge and, and giving people cool stuff that they can, you know, they can be proud to, to use and they work well. That's our goal. I'll tell you what, I think, I think we can all see that kind of culminated in the X crossbow that you guys are, uh, our release in here that 405 we got that in our hands um what a couple weeks ago now dave and holy cow i mean the technology that you guys have packed into that crossbow i don't think there was one thing missing on that 
It was it was an absolutely amazing performer. Reverse cam, you know, system, which is which is something everybody's looking for nowadays. The floating bolt technology. I mean, you just guys, you guys had everything packed into that. So kudos to you. Yeah, Thank we love you. this bow. This bow is a great bow. We actually really enjoyed the power. Really uh, good. But the design, you guys really went all out on this thing, honestly. It was it was like very detailed. And I was telling Tim we were, we were doing the video. I'm like, this thing's got a lot of detail to it that people just don't realize. You know, like like the foot stir of how it moves out. I mean, it's just amazing, like the the ideas you guys put into this. And, you know, I'm I'm not surprised by that. I, I you know, I, I, I assumed at some point you guys would do a crossbow that was going to be high end. Uh, but you guys actually did a good job of keeping this one quiet because uh, at that at that media hunt, you guys didn't bring this thing up. <laughs> no, <laughs> Todd was, was holding uh, out on me. <laughs> it was. We did, and it it was a lot of work. Listen, you know, as you guys all know, there's a lot of crossbows out there. It's a very competitive market. The prices are, you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of gone uh, either either you're under 500 bucks or you're over 1500 bucks. It seems to be there's no middle ground anymore, and you know. I got to the company, I was not an archer in, in 2016 when I joined Faradine. And so, you know, I went to camp with John and we went on a few hunts and we would be in camp with others that were using crossbows. And I would watch people, you know, that had no business owning a crossbow, cocking it, and then they'd get it cocked and they're walking around the camp with a bolt in it because they don't know how to, you know, yeah. get the bolt out and they didn't have a, you know, decocking bolt. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord, this is just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> And so John and I started talking about going, man, we, I think there's an option here for someone that can come up with a really safe, number one, quiet, right? You don't have the ratcheting system when you're cocking it. Number two is, you know, I would see people trying to cock these things and if they lose their grip, it would unspool. And, you know, that's where you, you have accidents. And so the whole thought process is around d developing a really safe crossbow, easy to cock, you could stop it anywhere in the cock cycle. If you decided to, you could uncock it from that position. There was no issue, no safety issue around that. Um, and then if you were to dry fire it, having a very, very uh, fulsome dry fire mechanism so it didn't wreck the crossbow. And so we started with those thought processes and then said, okay, what else, right? And so obviously stability, length, um, a lot of them are cumbersome in terms of the length. And, you know, as a rifle shooter, it's all about balance, right? And you get into some of these mm -hmm. blinds, uh, which a lot of people hunt out of or in a tree stand. And if you got a really front heavy crossbow, you know, it can be hard to, to manage and, and, you know, get, get steady. And so that came into play the size, um, obviously the reverse draw, the, the benefit of that is the smaller package, you're able to pack in all those features and benefits and still have that, that length, um, reduced as much as possible. And then and, obviously and the carbon it, it express, also put it also oh, I was puts, just going to say with the bolts with Carbon Express, having that brand that we purchased a couple of years ago allowed us to really be creative in terms of the bolt that we put on that. The, yeah, that bolt looks kind of different. Um, it, it's a it's thinner than than you what you would see in most bolts, and then you guys had like a, a protective covering towards the front of it. Yep. That's it was it was a really nice and, and you, I mean you hit everything that I saw in that grass bowl, You absolutely hit on and and number one I think for me was the balance you notice from the moment that you pick that up, when you put that grip in your hand, that thing, there, there's no front end weight, there's no back end weight. That thing is so well balanced over that grip, it's unbelievable. And that, that's, what I was, that's what I was about to say, was the, with the reverse draw, it puts the weight right there in the middle of the crossbow so that it's, it's balanced as, as well as it can be. Yeah, that's it was absolutely cool. phenomenal, man. They, they, seriously, we, we, we obviously as Bow Hunter Planet, we see a lot of the new stuff coming out um, you know, from the moment I picked up that crossbow, you could tell this thing, man, th th like I said before, the technology that you guys have dumped into it, that cocking mechanism, I have to say is probably the best cocking and decocking mechanism that I have seen out there in the marketplace right now. Great. We have, we have so many, <laughs> I wish you guys could like, if you guys were us for a week, you get to experience some interesting things, but you know, a lot of crossbows that have come through our business has been, um, initially, when you don't know how to use it, you know, if it's the problem I have sometimes with, with these is in, you done back there <laughs> is the consumer might not understand exactly how to use it. So yep. when we get it out of the box, it's, it's, and I say this to consumers all the time, make sure you read through the manual, make sure you understand it. Our guys don't usually do that because they think we're bowing a planet. Oh, I'll just do it. Da, da, da. And yeah. this guy over here in the <laughs> corner, Tim, wherever you on this thing, 
you know, they have broken many crossbows because of that scenario. And yeah. because, you know, the cocking, if you don't get it past a certain spot, if you don't pass the anti-dry fire, then to try to re-uncock it, you know, so I think the advantage to yours was we didn't have that issue at all. It was actually very simple, but I do recommend reading your manual, everybody. Yes. But yeah. it was a lot But listen, we do have to test it all out. I agree. Yeah. No, no. You know? I, I, think <laughs> I have to act like I'm an average person. Average person doesn't read a manual, yeah. so I just grab like, it. Like those anti-dry fire tests that we do, yeah, maybe we forgot to put a bolt in it, but we still tested it. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, it's a real test. <laughs> Kevin knows all about that. He's only done that 10,000 times. What are you talking about? And it's, it's a very detailed manual as well. It took us weeks to proof it and back and forth on the way that we, we approve and proof our anything that we write basically. And it was back and forth. So we, we tried to touch every single piece of that crossbow so that the consumer fully understands how to use it when they grab it, when they get it. Yeah, It, it was super easy. I'm, I, yeah, you know, just the again that technology you guys have made kind of flawless, dummy proof, if you will, um, in regards to how it works. I mean, the, and that cocking mechanism, it's literally as simple as winding it one way or winding it the other way. You know, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. So okay. I'm, go ahead. Sorry. I'm most the most thing I'm upset about right now is that I picked the wrong place to set my little office up. I I don't have a 200 inch white tail in my uh, in my view here. I should set <laughs> up down in my trophy room. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Oh man. We don't have that in all the state of Michigan. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was staged. Crazy. Yeah. Just happened to be the perfect spot in the cabin to just get that in there. <laughs> I'm in the wrong spot in my house. I got a room too, but I'm here. <laughs> so um shifting gears a little bit, let's talk muzzy. I know um, you know, we, we talked about the shank, which I, I brought with me on this, this uh, conversation. Uh, to me, one, it's going to be one of the best broadheads this year. I, I love it. I think it's amazing, the concept. Uh, you know, it's going to open. We actually tested it through a ballistic gel, and it was actually extremely impressive because you can actually see uh, in the gel where it starts to do this, and it starts to get bigger, you know, through that gel. And um, I'll send you guys a video of that later, but it was really, really cool to see that. Then to see that path is just an unbelievable yeah. flight path. The channels that it made were just phenomenal. I mean, uh, you can imagine the channels that it's going to make in a deer after it's seeing it go yeah. through that ballistic gel. I mean, they, they were perfect. Not to mention the, you know, like we said earlier before we started recording, the bone crushing tip, you know, this thing's great. So, so. Todd, I, you know, I got to see this when I went on that media hunt with, with Faradine with you guys. Uh, you guys kind of showed it to us. I was super excited about it then, and then now it's on the market, which is really exciting. Um, how's it been going, I guess, so far with this? Actually good. You know, um, you know obviously with, you know, we, we tried to get it out and get it in people's hands early and, and get some feedback early on, and the feedback was very positive. Obviously with Muzzy, you know, in, in, in Rage, we're always looking to make sure that, to John's point, we're, we're listening to consumer about what they're looking for from us. And, and it, it was, that's the one hole we had in our lineup was that type of a broadhead. And it made sense in Muzzy. And with, with Brian Quaka, the pig man, being, you know, one of our, one of our ambassadors on the Muzzy side, he really, um, really likes the Muzzy brand and really pushed for this kind of this kind of a broadhead from us and so he kind of worked with our engineers we tested it on a lot of different a lot of different versions of that on a lot of hogs and a lot of other animals down in texas and so had a lot of really good field uh feedback early on in the process and and then we were able to launch it this year and the feedback's been really strong you know i think people are looking to muzzy um it's more it's been more of the fixed blade traditional brand I think they're looking for some new and innovation, you know, innovative products out of the Muzzy brand. And I think this, along with Brian, really kind of answers that. And the, the reception has been very, very strong. Very cool. It's, it's a great head, honestly. And I, you know, when I was in text with you guys, the only thing I, I really tested hardcore was the Rage, which really technically didn't need testing, to be honest. But it was, that thing was unbelievable, man. Like, unbelievable. So it's really cool to me. You guys have both sides of the, of the story here. Uh, you know, you got the Muzzy brand, you got the Rage brand, which are two of the most, you know, well-known brands ever in the history of, of Broadhead. So it's really impressive. And I'm really excited that you guys put a head like this in that lineup. Uh, but I am also excited about, um, I mean, we could talk about Rage all day, of course, but the, the Rage lineup has been, I've never lost a deer to Rage. So I know some people might have issues here and there back then, but everybody can have an issue with any Broadhead, let's be honest. Yeah. But I've seen the best blood trails. I've never lost any recoveries. Everything's always been with the rage. And I, so 
to me, it's a tried and true broadhead. It doesn't even matter which one you guys do. The design, the system of it, and how it works to me is just flawless. Um, and it provides a massive entry holes, massive exit holes. I mean, I've seen the biggest gashes in my life. I think everybody could attest to that if they just watch any <laughs> rage pages with all the holes and stuff. It's it's nasty that they can do. <laughs> What goes through the development of a new broadhead? What's kind of your process? Do you guys like use ballistic gel? Do you guys, you know, air flight? How do, how do you guys work through that whole process? Everything. There's a, yeah, there's, there's a whole process that goes through, you know, um, with our software that we kind of test the product before it's even built as far as okay. its aerodynamics and the things that it can do and what it's capable of um, with the software that we use to design it. And then once it's prototyped, then we, we have a whole bunch of different tests that we do as far as strength and durability and deployment. And, you know, we, we kind of test every single piece in part so that when we um, bring that product to market, we know it's as good as it, it possibly can be. And, and, you know, since day one, that's the type of thing we've always done. And, and we try to do some crazy tests because when we first started rage back in 2006 and we came to market, um, you know, it was, it was, I'm not going to say it's the dawning of the age of the internet, but it was kind of, I'm not going to say new, pretty new back then. And, and the things that people would do to broadheads um, to test them and then post what they did. And, and it's just amazing the things that people would do from day one, you know, um, they'd post, they shot it into a VCR and it, it, this happened, or I shot it into <laughs> a pallet and this happened. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm talking since the first days. And so we've always done some really rugged testing on our products to make sure that we can one you know be as efficient as we can be you know and take an animal but two try to do what we can do to um suppress that uh the craziness of what people try to do when they test them and stuff so i feel like i want to do that now john like i feel yeah, like exactly. i want to go shoot a cassette tape in a vcr <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is this VCR 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 talk of, though? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> well, that's find a VCR? Aging <laughs> so. kevin's probably well, got one <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dave, I think one of the things with, to your point on, on broadheads, listen, they all, they all can have issues, right? And I think the, the biggest um, pushback early on, and John, you'll attest to this because you were there and I wasn't, was early on, it was all about, you know, pre-deployment, right? And the, and the shock collar or the O-ring, whatever it was. And, you know, that evolution over time, I think number one is, is people got smarter about how to actually put on the, um, the shock collar um, and or the O-ring. But, you know, it was kind of the last um, true pushback that consumers could have. Um, because, listen, it's, it's like the bullet, right? Uh, if you miss an animal, it's never the, the person's fault. It's either the bullet or the body. <laughs> That's exactly um, right. So, my excuse. Exactly. <laughs> so what we decided to do was, listen, if that's the last – last of the excuses on pre-deployment, then let's, let's fix it. And that's, that's the whole idea behind the NC, the no-collar, was, listen, it's – Let's get rid of it. How do we do that? And how do we keep um, everything else the same with the exception of the no collar? And, and then there's no more talk about, uh, you know, is the shot collar on? The shot collar come off? Did they put it on right? Did they not put it on right? It goes away. We launched that a year ago and it was phenomenal. Literally, we, we could not keep up with demand. Um, and so we obviously have been adding it to the other versions within rage this year and it's been it's been phenomenal and so you know again to john's point staying ahead of the curve staying ahead of the competition listen to consumers listening to what they're saying both both positive and negative and then trying to incorporate that into our thinking in terms of r d was really what culminated in that nc and it's it's been a phenomenal success since we've launched it last year so we're very excited about it you mean, you mean people are actually going to have to take responsibility for the bad shots now? <laughs> no, now it's going to be the arrow's fault. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, the only, I've never really heard a lot, of, like, I've never really heard negative press on the two blade. And I know you guys have obviously heard a lot more stuff because you are rage and people contact you with issues. But in my experience, I've never really heard of any issues with the two blade the only issue i ever heard was with a three blade and i don't know it sounded like it was the pre-deployment this goes back like like john was saying this goes way back in time um that's yep. it and that was a long time ago when i heard that and uh i've never personally experienced a, a pre-deployment and anything but maybe it's i don't pull enough weight on my bow i don't know <laughs> i'm too low um 
So um, real quickly, so, you know, obviously Rage is great. So I've, I, don't, I don't have anything else to say about Rage besides that, you know, it's tried and true and it's, it's an amazing product. And I think anybody's used it will love it. Um, and I think that you guys have everything that fits a consumer. Cause like I said, if you go from rage, if you don't want that type of broadhead, you can go to Muzzy and find probably something you're going to like a lot. So yep. you've really covered the broadhead market very well and uh, very impressive to be honest. Um, what about carbon express? What's going on with them right now? And then what you guys are doing with that brand? Is there new arrows out right now? And I guess, what can we expect? Yeah. John, why don't you talk there's about, a, yeah, there's the a, move. you know, the biggest thing that, that, we were kind of missing in the Carbon Express brand. And, you know, Carbon Express has is, is built their reputation on the dual spine and the tri-spine technology, the, the two different technologies they have in the Maxima Red and, um, um, you know, our, our dual spine, which we kind of changed the name as we went into this year, calling them Destroyer. So anything you see as a Destroyer is a, is a dual spine and then the Maxima Red, those are your tri-spine arrows. So um, the dual spine and the tri-spine give you two different options as far as how the, the arrow itself flexes in flight and controlling that flex where it's soft where it, it, it needs to be and it's stiff where it needs to be so that it gives you the best arrow flight that you can possibly get. And the one piece of the puzzle that we were kind of missing was the tri-spine in a, in a small micro diameter arrow. So that's what we kind of focused on as we came into this year with our triad and the triad is a tri-spine arrow that is basically a 166 ID. So it's a super small diameter. We have a really awesome outsert insert system that we built for this arrow. Um, and it's, it's kind of heavy um, grains per inch wise. So it's basically going to be a super heavy hitting arrow and everyone that's using them um, just rants and raves about the, the, the system itself and it's just it, it penetrates unbelievably well and it flies like it, it's it's unbelievable the flight the penetration it's just everything that you would really want an arrow and uh so that that was kind of our focus as we came into this year and you know it's it's really panned out um to be a pretty awesome product i love the look of it i love the look of all these you guys did a great job in design they look so good very cool. Yeah. And that stuff. one, you know, one of the biggest things that, you know, we do is we, we go forward when we look at our different, you know, we want them to stand out when people are using them. And yeah. we also want it to, to have a little bit of a function as well. So, um, you know, that, that it's not going to be, uh, no one's going to mistake what arrow, uh, they're using when they see them using that triad for sure. So this arrow, this one, Tim was talking about earlier for the ax. Um, so this arrow, is like an arrow diameter and then at the end you add this this uh, how does that work i guess it's it's very similar to that outsert system that you just saw on the on the triad that you were okay. looking at so basically it takes it out to the 5 16 diameter which is what your field point would be um and it gives you that so you can use a standard point on it and it doesn't have to uh it, it basically gets it to where you can use an 832 thread uh, um, on a 166 arrow got it very cool but yeah, it's 17 inches and, and, uh, and it's, Todd can attest to it because there's still a couple bolts sticking in a target out in yeah. um, shooting range that I, I <laughs> they try to get well. out of there sometime today. Yeah, they <laughs> penetrate really well. What's the, what's the, like, you know, the arrow that sells the most or the most that you guys, you know, people are always asking about, is it the Maxima Red, the original one? Or how, how does that, I the, guess, from the, the history? Mac the Maxima Red historically and that, that uh, the destroyer MX Hunter, which is the, the Maxima Hunter arrow, that arrow and the, you know, that's a dual spine arrow there. And then the Maxima Red and, and the Maxima Red is the tri-spine. This one's a dual spine. So these two, this arrow has been around forever. And uh, we just kind of cleaned it up and gave it a different name this year and, and kind of had it go into the line um, so that we have some consistency, you know, of dual spine, tri-spine, that was kind of our goal to, to rename it, if you will, this year. But yeah, those those arrows, um, and then the SD version of the of the Maxima Red has been uh, extremely popular, and, and that's the arrow that myself that I'm shooting the Destroyer SD um, this year, just because everybody else is shooting triads, and I shot triads last year, so I just wanted to be a little bit different and show that you know. Not that I'm some kind of a big deal, but it, uh, <laughs> you know, these arrows work really, really well too, you know, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to use them. They fly awesome. And, and uh, now 
I haven't got to shoot anything with him yet, but uh, <laughs> maybe tonight come. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um that that's awesome I, I these are very exciting i like i love the way they look i think you guys did a great job with this the um the one thing i want to actually talk about i totally forgot about and i apologize so i have to back up just a second is is the one um yep. this this broadhead um uh todd i remember you telling me about this in texas and it was coming yep. you guys are working on it this broadhead um is amazing so if if you guys aren't familiar with this broadhead is a solid piece and that's what makes it a, like a unbelievable broadhead. And I shot this last year um, out of a crossbow at 46 yards. And I shot a doe with it and I hit a hard shot with it. It was unbelievable. And, and the, the reason I know this is because I had a light and knock on. So when I fired, I never, I mean, the arrow went completely straight and hit this deer perfectly. It was just like a beam, just a straight beam. And I was just so impressed. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow, you know, I, there was no fluctuation or anything. So I guess, tell us about this head. Where did you guys, you know, how is it made? And, and you know, how'd you guys keep the specs so good to where it's going to fly true like that? So it's machined from a one piece of stainless steel. So it's, it's a machined head. Um, it's a different process than any other head that you see out there that, that is in this category. So basically um, we were able to take a, a good quality stainless steel and machine it. And that allows it to stay true. And it also gives it the strength that that you see that it has. And the way that it's designed from the venting to um, the the tip, every single part of it is is kind of a unique design in the way that it flies, it flies quiet, it does everything that a broadhead's supposed to do, and it's just solid. We just we just did a new commercial this little bit ago that we just kind of launched and we tested, you know, we showed this in kind of different scenarios through wood through a steel barrel into concrete um and we put that all in the commercial to show how strong this head is and how well it flies and and uh it's just it's just a great head and uh yeah i shot an elk with one last year and uh it's pretty impressive how it works well wow, the biggest thing dave is wow 85 the, grain yeah that's something you don't see mm -hmm. every day yeah i was gonna say yeah we did 85 100 and the 125 and to john's point you know again back to the consumer right the, the last thing on, on, the, on the fixed blade was a, a broadhead that didn't have multiple parts that could come apart, right? So the weakest link in a broadhead is where they, you know, where they come together. And so on the fixed blade, the thought was, well, if we can do it out of a single piece, you don't have any weak links because it's, it's, it's a single piece. And so, but it took us a long time because it's very expensive to machine. Um, so getting the cost right to where people could actually afford it, um, Took us a while. It took us actually a couple of years, and so um, we're very excited about it because it is the strongest broadhead on the market. Um, because there are no weak links, it's a single piece of stainless steel, and it flies like a dart. Um, to your point, Dave, that's what we wanted it to do. It, it had to because we can tune it, and so we spin them and we make sure that they're accurate. And any any ones that aren't don't get don't get packaged. And so high quality control, fly like a dart, incredibly incredibly strong and, and that was the whole idea behind it and that kind of filled out the muzzy line with what we feel is the strongest fixed blade broadhead out there so i i feel like what you guys did there was pretty much again covered the entire market broadheads <laughs> so you have you know like i said whatever you don't if you don't like the rage type of broadhead you have it all in muzzy i mean there's literally so much variety there it's, it's crazy it's, it's literally extremely impressive to me um so Again, I, hats off on that head. I, you know, I tested that one myself, like I said, and it was just unbelievable. That's one of the first hard shots I've had in a long time too. So <laughs> it was actually a pretty good feeling. And I was like, oh man, this is unbelievable. This thing is just straight line. Um, the other thing I want to talk about Muzzy real quick, I almost forgot about it. This was super exciting. And I think you guys brought it up on the media hunt as initial phases, but now it's public and um, I'm going to uh, share my screen here. But this is something I was extremely excited about. Um, ah. what is going on with this? Is this, I mean, you guys have to be doing really well with this right now, or at least in the yeah. springtime. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's it, it, been it, crazy. It, it has Go been ahead, crazy. It's, and, it's yeah. Been it's, it, it has been crazy. It's been, you know, a, one of those products that, you know, and that's one of the things that I'll say is when it comes to bow fishing, like generally it's a springtime sport, but we saw bow fishing, uh, carry through right up till now. We're still, back ordered on different products in bow fishing right wow. now which is just crazy to think about but yeah this particular product was what the consumer really wanted and it 
takes a, you know, it's a camless lever design that, um, you know, it comes in at a retail price point that's extremely palatable to, to the consumer and it, it's feature packed and it's very simplistic in its design. So there isn't really anything that can go wrong with it in the way that the lever system works. So it's the camless lever bow and, um, you know, it's just been extremely popular and, and you know, we, we've been shipping them uh, like crazy and, you know, there's, it's been an awesome product. There's a lot of engineering that went into this thing as well too. And, and we worked with Oneida um, to, to kind of get it across the finish great. line. And, and uh, it's been, it's been a great, it's been a great product and, you know, it works well. We've all Todd, myself, you know, our team, we've all had the chance to, to shoot fish with them. And, and, you know, alligators, our VP of sale just shot a, I don't know, almost a 12 foot long alligator here a few weeks ago down in, in Georgia. And, and uh, you know, it's just a great product does everything that it's supposed to do. And, and, you know, it works really well. That's a custom one that we did for um, one of our, our buying groups, if you will, and NBS, they had asked for a custom color and, and uh, so we did that's that cool. one for them too. So that's another option that's out there. So yeah, it's available cool. in a kit uh or not a kit bow by itself and and you'll see when if you get get your hands on one there's a lot of unique pictures from the out the outboard limbs to the way that the limbs are designed and and you know the cable guard like every everything that that goes into this bow was was well thought out there's even a um our engineers hit a bottle opener in the riser as well as a uh, <laughs> um, a tip cool. wrench so that is so cool some cool stuff yeah, this is great. Are you guys getting people asking about using this for actual deer hunting? You know, I haven't. I haven't, but I'm not the one that talks to the customers every day either. So, you know, that'd be a good question. How many pounds you know, is this to, thing? Uh, it's, it can, it maxes out. You can max it out, you know, a little over 50 pounds. So, uh oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see some people <laughs> using this for mm -hmm. dual things. But either way, I, I will say this on this, and I've worked with Oneida for years um, when they were in Michigan and when I started BHP back in the day. And um, the one thing you guys did that, you know, is, is amazing to me that you did that they never could do is this. Yeah. yeah. They can never well, get the price down. And, and I, I am, I am so excited about this for you guys because I feel like this is exactly what consumers wanted from them a long time ago on the price point, you know, and to get it down was always an issue. <clears throat> and I, I remember when Matt and the Polytons owned it and all that. And, you know, I, I we'd always talk about that because they could never, you know, it was just not even in the, in the cards. They could never get oh, it. That, down. Was a, that was basically a thousand dollar boat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's why, and this, I love it. I love this because it's simple. That's the other thing. I love the, how simple this whole thing is. It looks great. It's very simplified. I, this, like, if I go bow fishing, this is what I want to use. No, no doubt about it. Like, so this to me is, is definitely the future, uh, you know, going forward. I think this year you guys probably saw that surge, especially because of COVID people are extremely bored and they needed stuff yes. to do like this. And I think, yeah. I think you're going to get more out of that in the next few years. I think people are going to keep buying them. Um, and it's going to keep growing and growing. I think you guys will grow so much in this category. You'll have tons of colors and options. And <laughs> well, you'll, yeah, you'll see as we go into next year, there'll be a, a little bit different version of that that we'll offer as we go into 2021 too. So that's one of the new things we've been working on. Uh, you know, we, we didn't even mention, you know, we have, I mean, you guys have so many brands. It's unbelievable. You could probably sit here for five hours, but we didn't even mention um, Nocturnal and the amazing stuff that that can do. Is there anything new on that front this year or not really? Yep. There'll be a, there'll be something new that you'll see in 2021 that we're coming out with that uh, again, to Todd's point, like I said, you know, it's about listening to consumers and uh, it simplifies, let's say it simplifies the process of, of uh, operating the knock, put it that way. So oh, very cool. that, you know, that's one of the, the biggest things that, that we've had since day one and in the way that our, our knock works and it's very simplistic in its design with its, linear string activated switch um it's foolproof it works it does everything it's supposed to do and it's consistent you know it's extremely water resistant um you know it's there's a reason why it's become the most popular knock out there and and you know just because of how it works and then when we came out with the fit system it really simplified it for people because that's that's been the biggest thing that we learned when we first started with the company is that you know to, the, the consumer doesn't know what arrow that 
they're necessarily using. And they don't want to be emasculated when they walk into a retail store and say, I need some lighted knocks. And the, and the guy asks them, what, you know, what, what arrow are you shooting? And they don't like that. They're like, Ooh, huh, I don't know yeah. this way. They, as long as they're not using a G, which is that one, six, six, small, extremely small diameter, this knock will fit their arrow. And all they have to do is pick the right bushing. Cause the, the, it, the knock itself is an X and then, you know, you have your three different bushings for all, every size arrow that's out there. And it simplifies it for that consumer and it makes it, it makes it easy. And we have so many different color options that there's going to be one that somebody's going to think is really cool from our strobing models to the solid colors and, and, you know, they're the white one, you know, and it just everything that you'd really want at a lighted knock, it's, it's all right there. And, and, uh, you know, one of my friends just shot a, um, a whitetail in Montana a couple of weeks ago with a strobing and he did it on slow-mo and it was awesome to see the green, red, green, yeah. red on the, the arrow <laughs> on the way to the, the deer. That's and, cool. but when you see it in, in real time, it's, you know, it's super fast. It, it's just, they're, they're an awesome deal. What's yeah, up? no, that, that, that absolutely simplifies. I remember years ago, we used to work with a competitor uh, of your guys in that category and the table that they had for what arrow and what this and what that was absolutely ridiculous to try and find out, you know, what knock do I need to buy? And then if you're wrong, you wasted all that money and have to repurchase it. Yeah. So that, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and what, is, what goes into the construct? Like when you talk about making this product and you talk about this material, I'm assuming, um, obviously this is tried and true now. We know that, but like, let's say when Nocturnal started this out, started this business, was that like one of the hardest parts was to find the right plastic or material that wouldn't break because of that kind of pressure? Absolutely. There's a, there's a super fine line between, you know, malleability. So you, you want to make sure that it's stiff enough to, you know, withstand the shot itself, but you also want to make sure that it, it has a little bit of bendability, if you will, malleability, so that it can move a little bit. And so it's a super fine line. You don't want it too stiff. You don't want it too um, soft. And then it's a, a big part of it is the adhesive that's used to put the battery into the knock itself. And that's kind of a proprietary thing that we, that we worked very hard to figure out a better alternative for an adhesive. And what we found is second to none. And so that's why they're so strong. That's why they're so tough and do the things they're supposed to do is, you know, one, the construction of the knock, but two, the adhesive that we use that uh, holds the whole thing together. So that's kind of the key. Yeah, this is really cool. I, I, I love this brand, honestly. I, I've never had issues. It's always worked. It's very, very needed for, um, in my opinion, for hunting. I, I I, I'm a very, um, I push this on everybody. If it's legal in your state, do it. I think it's probably legal in most states by now, but I'm sure there's a few, but um, you know, it, to me, it's just so helpful to see where you hit the animal. I mean, it really helps give you that perspective of, is it a decent shot or I need to wait a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you film your hunts at all, it's mandatory. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's almost mandatory. <laughs> Um, question. Uh, so did you guys absorb the carbon express light inox into the nocturnal brand? Cause I see launch pad down here. Yep. Or did yeah, you guys did. Both? Yep. We did. And, and we kind of, they had a, they have a very unique system when we bought that company as far as because crossbow <laughs> bolts are not as standardized as the mandrel sizes of arrows. So right. um, crossbow bolts can vary all across the board. So you can't just make a, you know, an S size um, bushing, a, you know, whatever size bushing, because they're all, they all vary. So with this universal collet system that, that, that uh, Carbon Express had on their launch pad knock, we incorporated that into the Nocturnal brand, which is what you see there. So that collet system on the bottom, you can screw that knock system, you know, screw that collet up or down, and that will, oh. that, that squeezes out against the, the shaft so that it yep. it's it's tight in your arrow no matter what size um bolt you're using that's cool that's a good idea <laughs> it's amazing the stuff you guys come up with yeah it's like crazy like i would never think of that but that's like genius oh i love that stuff so is there anything else you guys want to cover in the brands because I, I i there's so many is there anything i missed you want to talk about today um you know there's uh we cover a lot of stuff I and mean, we have a lot of different brands and and you know from maybe the through fire john it's been yeah, a huge success. we can talk about the through fire the through fire itself is a really in, unique um release and this part right there that 
that hook looking release. And it's, it looks really strange when you see it, but if you haven't used one, um, it is, it's awesome. And that's the release that I'm using myself. Um, anyone that has target panic, um, or don't have, or you don't have target panic either way, it, it makes you a really consistent shooter and how it works. So basically when you draw the bow back, keep your finger out of that cradle because there's an, ex there's a trigger that's inside of it. You draw the bow back and lay your finger into the cradle. And as you pull through the shot, as you draw your, push your elbow back and, and pull through the shot, it exposes that trigger that's inside of, of the, that hook on the bottom side of that hook and uh, sets the, the assembly off to, to fire the bow. So it's, you can't really punch it just like you could do with your uh, regular trigger wrist style release. You have to pull through the shot to be able to shoot the bow and you can, you know, you can feel and you can see how your consistency improves when you're shooting literally within the first couple ends of, of shooting that bow with that release for the first time. It's, it's remarkable how well it works. It's awesome. Dave, you really need to try I do. One. I need this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is definitely, this we is designed definitely. this for John for his yeah. pad, target pad. Yep. So. And that's, that's been, that's haunted me for, for years and years and I'll come in and out of it. And, and uh, this thing, you know, I, I was shooting it just right before I left for Colorado for a hunt and you know, I was shooting at 50 yards and I just, I don't know. I shouldn't be able to shoot a group that tight at 50. I was just, I impressed myself because that's not usually the, the way I shoot. So, but yeah, it shoots really well. It's a, it's a really cool, we offer it in a, in a small version because as a training aid for youth, it, this particular re release makes a ton of sense for, um, for kids that are just starting so that they can learn how to shoot properly and not jam in the trigger. So wow. um, that is yeah, really it's, a, it's a cool product. Very cool. All right. Well, I guess, uh, you know, well, we covered most of the products. There's still a lot more, obviously, we don't have all day. But, um, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, when you guys are ready, we can always do more products, no problem. But I wanted to ask you guys, you know, before we go, uh, just what's going on this year with yourselves uh, for hunting and things like that? What do you guys got going on? Well, John, John, why don't you go first? You just got back, and that's the reason we're quarantined is because yeah. he, yeah. he got exposed on his trip. But he's, yeah, he's started got... something that I can go, so. Yeah, I just got back from a Colorado elk hunt and uh, yeah, we, we ended up getting exposed to COVID and, and uh, so I'm currently and, and not elk and, not, and no elk. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a tough hunt. And, you know, historically that place that we went is really good, but uh, this year it was just really weird. Uh, um, they weren't, they were not as many elk and uh, it was just a tough hunt, but, you know, for the most part, you know, Todd and I, we try to keep pretty busy when it comes to it. Now Todd will say that I hunt a lot, which I, I do sometimes, but, uh, um, it's I've got, <laughs> we've got an understatement. Place. Yeah. We, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have several different whitetail hunts that, uh, he hunts I'll do more over. than most TV celebrities. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, He's in I'll have sev <laughs> several whitetail hunts that I'll do over the course of the next few weeks. I'll, I'll hunt Kentucky, uh, Iowa, Minnesota. I got a really good place in Minnesota. Um, and then, uh, um trying to think what else oh missouri i'll hunt missouri as well so and it's all research places. though right it's, yeah, it's it for a purpose testing. this is you know? testing <laughs> that's what i yeah. that's what i tell my wife anyways like you know i, I have to it's 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 the job <laughs> yeah yeah exactly he takes full advantage of the testing let me tell you on <laughs> oh, texas in texas oh, as well. oh, oh and texas yeah. whoops forgot <laughs> oops <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and in alaska maybe yeah. right yeah <laughs> No, I was actually supposed supposed to go to Alaska on a caribou hunt this, you know, early a few oh. weeks ago, but uh, that ended up getting stomped because of the COVID deal. Yeah, that stinks. COVID. I just got back from uh, Oregon, actually. So I used to live out there when I was with Michaels of Oregon, and I've been hunting out there since the late '90s. And so go back to the same place every year, a friend of mine. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, just talking about COVID and and you know this, this whole talk about people spending more time outdoors. So we hunt private ranches. We got a big lease out there, but it, it butts up against public uh, national forest. And I've been hunting this specific spot since 98. I've never seen more hunters in archery season on public property than I did this year. So I think it bodes well for the sport, just the participation. Awesome. Um, I think a lot of it is 
you know, we all get busy, right? And we all, you know, whether it's we have kids or jobs or, you know, whatever it is, kids are in sports, you just don't have the time. I think one of the benefits of COVID for, for the outdoors, and I, and I saw it personally, is just people that have been away from the sport for a while coming back. And I'm really hoping that they'll stick with it. They'll realize how much they missed it. They'll realize how much their kids enjoyed it and they'll be able to do it. But I'll, I'll tell you, I've never seen archery hunters like I did this, this past week out in Oregon. Um, you know, every trailer camp, every trailer park was full. There were people on the public land parked where they could. I mean, people, you know, just everywhere, which is great. So um, I enjoyed it. I was out running around. Um, what were you hunting? By, I was hunting in, in the Desolation Unit, which is the middle fork of the John Day. So just outside of John Day, Oregon. For whitetail or elk? elk is it? For elk okay. and mule deer. Okay. Both. Yep. So um, saw a ton of animals. Uh, we were probably a little bit early. We were, we were bugling. We called some in. Um, actually, you know, chased the biggest, biggest elk I've ever chased out there for four days and then lost him on the fourth day. Could never get within 100 mm -hmm. yards. So um, you just had a lot of cows with them. But I tell you what, it was so much fun. Um, weather was great. A little bit of smoke from the fires, but it was good to get out. And, and now I'm back. And so would you see out hunting for the next month? I got to work. So mm -hmm. bow hunting or gun hunting? No, it was bow hunting. And which broadhead were you using for that? So I had, I had the new NC on. Cool. Yep. And I had the new, the new arrows as well. So I was kind of testing out all the new stuff this year and unfortunately never got to draw back, but I was ready if I needed to. So. <laughs> Sounds like you need to do a little all? bit more of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man. That is so funny. That's cool though. That sounds fun. That sounds like a good trip. I, yeah, we haven't really done much here on this end just yet, but you know, we're getting there. Season just started here in Michigan. So yeah, we'll be out soon and hopefully, uh, you know, chasing some decent deer and, uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So you guys, uh, is this pretty much, um, I guess at what point will you guys stop traveling like November, December, or at what point does that stop? So I'm going to go down I'm gonna... for work. Uh, for hunting, yeah. for hunting, for work, hunting. hunting. Yeah, general, general hunt right <laughs> through the end of the year, so. Right December. Yeah. Um, are you guys are you guys noticing? Um, and you guys are actually good person, good people to ask this question too, because uh, as far as uh, stock on things, like getting things, um, you know, I've noticed a lot of stores are pretty much sold out of lots of stuff. Um, is that is there a hard, is the supply chain really hard right now or I guess how's that working for you guys for getting arrows and all your stuff in to sell is that is there is there a hiccup or are you catching up to that? Well, it, it's it's kind of twofold, right? So depending on the the company and and what happened early on in the year, um, the biggest issue was for those those companies that got shut down during the early days of COVID. You know, we lost sixty days of production. We were wow. shut down in Wisconsin, and so we had to furlough. Um, and we're shut down. And so yeah, you, you have 60 days that you weren't able to produce. And because our, you know, archery is so seasonal, right? Basically your sales yeah. happen in 120 days. We spend the first six months of the year building inventory in the slow part of the year mm. to ship it all in 120 days. Well, when, when 60 days of that goes away because of shutdown, it makes it really hard to catch up. And so we've been working, you know, we've hired, we brought all of our people back. We've added about a, we've hired another couple of hundred people um, since then. We're chasing it with overtime. We're working, you know, 50 hours a week. We're working overtime. We're working a second shift, doing everything we can to catch the demand. But, you know, we'll never catch it all. And a lot of the, the other CEOs I talked to at other companies are kind of in the same, the same thing, right? It, it hit so fast, went from feast or from famine to feast overnight. You know, our supply chains, whether it's raw materials, components, you got to spool those people up. A lot of those smaller businesses were affected by COVID as well. And so they were digging out of a hole and it kind of creates this, this backup in the whole supply chain. And so, you know, I would tell you that as we get closer to season and in season, there are certain categories that we've been able to really increase output like our broadheads. Um, and so we're, we're cranking out broadheads like crazy. Other, other things that have longer lead time like arrows, we're still behind, but we're catching it. Um, and, you know, where we're doing everything we can to chase this unprecedented demand that kind of us and our retailers are seeing right now. But it's, it's been, uh, it's been a, a year that, you know, no one would expected. Um, 
and it, it continues to be challenging to, to kind of catch that demand as, as more and more people are, are finding the sport or going back to the sport and participating in the sport. Got that right. <laughs> it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy year. Uh, Todd, John, thank you guys for joining us from Faradine. Appreciate you guys giving us the lowdown of what's going on, all the new stuff. We we'll look forward to all the new stuff you guys have coming out and uh, we'll talk more soon. So thank you guys so much. All right. Thanks everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good seeing you.